Damn Minute Podcast. Our topic tonight is stepdads are the best. Webster Dictionary defines it as the husband of one's parent when distinct from one's natural or legal father. Some may call them a bonus dad. Whichever you choose to call them, I believe they can play a vital role in a child's life. We'll be talking with a young man and his stepdad tonight about their relationship from their perspective. As always, share our Facebook lives, like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Wait a Damn Minute. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Welcome to our midweek wake up. But tonight we're doing something a little different. We have guests with us. Of course, if you was with us last week, you know that we had Keon with us um, on quarantine seniors. He's a quarantine senior from Lakeland, graduate. Um, he's an entrepreneur. Um, he's attending Howard next month, and he's so excited, y'all. He don't care <laughs> about if they gonna leave him that dorm. He's going to exactly. campus next month. <laughs> and also, in between graduating and getting prepared for Howard, Keon did a very, very special um, Father's Day video that went viral. Had millions of views hundreds and thousands of comments, shares, celebrity shares, celebrity comments. It was a tearjerk. And tonight we have the gentleman, his stepdad that he did the video for and presented him with some papers, which Keon will tell us about. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you, Zonville, for joining us. And thank you, Keon, for coming back. So we'll start with you, Mr. Donzell. Is that right? Okay. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, uh, so, give you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm, I'll be 39 in September. Uh, outside of Keon, I have four grown kids well, from my beautiful wife. Um, I did six years in the Air Force. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in, in business management, and I currently work for Pepsi. So, I hope oh. you can take a drink. It is. Okay. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> to being in that child's life, please allow that child to be themselves. Don't try to turn them into something they're not or try to, you know what I'm saying, raise them a certain way because of how you were raised and everything like that because you have to understand that that child is coming from a different mindset than you are. For the kids that have step parents, listen to your step parent because they were not being, they, they chose to be in your life at, at the end of the day. They didn't have to be there. But they chose to stick around for the love of their significant other and you as well. So that's why I'm gonna say is listen to them. If that's 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 basically all I have to say is listen to them and not to say that they're always right, but nine times out of ten they're doing what they're doing in your favor because they love you. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. That's good. That's what Jared and Buck is. You know what I'm saying? Oh yeah. <laughs> If you're on that shit, it's a little snippy. Um, I mean, just like any other child. Right. right? Um, a stepchild and a biological child is no different. You're going to have differences, right? Right. And so, as he's growing up and going through the different stages, um, you're going to get it. Um, matter of fact, as he, you know, went into his teenage years, he started feeling himself. He started, oh, okay. He started coming to the little teachers and the little girls. So, I like him. <laughs> he, got, he got a little height on him. I'm a little short man. He got a little height on him. He started thinking he was the man in the house. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a little bump here by the show him who it actually is the man of the house. But right. at the end of the day, just like you know, a child, you have those mm -hmm. situations, you work through them, um, and you, you got to make sure that as you go through those situations, you have respect, right? Mm -hmm. So I always respect him. I always understood that he was his own individual, and at the end of the day, he's a, he's a person with thoughts and feelings and, and, and visions on how he want to do certain things, so I had to respect that. And he also had to respect the fact that I was the the authority figure in his life and you know and he went from there. You're right, because how 
Olha, Mabel out your daughters, biological daughters. I love them. Fuck that all like them. Because they think they know everything. Right. They don't right. have the last word. And, I, and, you know, and one of them, I would, I, I could never hear her say smart stuff back. But then lately, baby, she got a diploma and then she grown. So I was like, look. Because yeah. my mom ain't like me growing up. She loved me, but I got a lot of demons because my mouth. So for you to accept him and y'all to bump heads and you still was able to disappear him, that's a big pat on the back because. Like I said, I, I don't like my daughters sometimes because I'm like they, the stuff they do, the way they act, but I love them. Right. right. So how old? So Doctor, how old was Keon when you came into the um relationship? You know, into the relationship, or already made relationship. So he was. How old was he when you entered into that relationship? So he was very young. So okay. he was um he was right at two two and a half. When okay. He had to take life. Um, and um, so I pretty much been his life. Oh, so, so he's pretty much like your son. He's like my son. And I always treat him that way. Right? Mm -hmm. So when people would ask me, you know, how many kids you got? I would say five. I don't say four. I'm a stepchild. Right. I don't say, oh, I have a stepson. And even when it was just him, you know, mm -hmm. him, his wife, I mean, my wife and, and myself, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say I have a stepson. Mm -hmm. I would say I have a son. All right. Because okay. I felt like he was my son. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So also, um, yeah, I know you mentioned last week that your your biological is here in Suffolk, right? Yes, ma'am. So, how was that done there with the biological and Keon, you, both of you can answer this question. How was that knowing that his biological is here? You know how sometimes people have that issue mm -hmm. where the step parent don't know if they cross the certain boundaries because the biological is like not even around the street, but maybe couple of minutes or a couple of hours away, they still kind of like battle that. So it becomes an issue between the adults right. and then the kid plays both sides because the adults are having issues because the biological might say, hey, you overstepping, you crossing into my lane. And then the stepfather said, well, this is my lane because this is my house. So how, how did that work with you guys? Well, it was kind of touchy at first. You know, trying to, trying to find my spot, my mm -hmm. place okay. as a stepfather knowing that he has a biological father that's, okay. that's there, right, okay. close by. Um, at the end of the day, you know, I had to find my place. And he's in the household with me. So ultimately, it's my responsibility to make sure that I set the path correctly for this child to be able to go out into this world and have the best chance to be successful. So I had to get to a point where I had to just say, hey, hey, I understand you have a biological father and I respect him and I will never let you disrespect him mm -hmm. uh, in my presence. But at this moment, I have to do the things that I need to do to ensure his future. And so any feelings that comes with that, or if I step on any toes, I apologize. But my main focus right now is him. And right now, we need more men out here down here. Where are they at? Where y'all at? Right again, man. Can I answer that question? So I can say that when it comes down to everything, respect has played the biggest role in that in that idea of the biological father and the stepfather because my dad has never ever spoken like not once spoken bad about my biological father to anybody not to my mother definitely not to me mm -hmm. he's never spoken bad about anybody on that side of the family as a matter of fact it's always been the focus was on me and mm -hmm. like like he said and but in my case and everything like that i did have to battle that confusing upbringing of bouncing between households right. every weekend, every other weekend and everything like that. It's different um, atmospheres as I go to each household and everything like that. Different struggles on each side. So that's really why I'm such a diverse person at the end of the day because of that. But at the end of the day it all bounced off of respect and respect everybody has for one another. Oh, okay.
taking him on as a son. It taught me how to be a father. So that's the reason why I'm, I'm the father I am to his other four siblings, because he right. came in and taught me the meaning of sacrifice, the meaning of selfless, the meaning of knowing that you have this little human being who's defenseless and is dependent on you to do the right thing, to take the leadership mm -hmm. within their life to lead them and guide them in the right direction. So I would say he's my bonus. I'm not his bonus. Oh, hey, that's good. All right. So basically, you ain't never, did you have a stepfather? No, I had my father. My right. So it was all new to you. You took it. Because, you know, growing up, you would hear step parents are the wicked bitch in the West. Or right. they could be mean. Right. And, it's, and honestly, I can say that I learned from my mom. Um, I have a sister outside of my mom. And my mom treated my sister just like us. Right. Like she treated no different, which it came so natural because then my children have a, uh, a sibling outside of me. And it's natural. Like, I had somebody tell me, you crazy, you know, <laughs> keeping her and this and that. I'm like, no. She can come, she can stay with me. And that young lady live with, live with me right now. That's my baby. Like, I said, I have three daughters. Right. Well, four daughters. I have three daughters, but I say four daughters because she don't like me to say, this is my stepchild. And the, the weird part about it is, I will share with you all, me and her dad got young. But I still do for her and make sure she spend time with my girls. Like, me and her, me and her dad got a long time. We just not together. We not married. But I still make sure they together. And she be with me. She live with me. So it comes natural. Treat people the way you want to be treated. But I really get mad from my mom. So for yours, it's really just about respect and love your wife. But you actually took um, Keon in like that. Because I don't, I guess it comes from TV to movies. They step first, they're supposed to be mean. Right. Yeah. They look like the step first. I mean, I don't mean, know where they come from, but they gotta be mean. Yeah. Feel <laughs> So, Dante, I know you said you had your father. So, did you grow up in the home with your father? Yeah, I grew up in the home with both of my parents. My mm -hmm. father was okay. definitely a strong influence in my life. Uh -huh. um, he made sure that he, you know, told me how to be a man, right? He right. told me how to stand on my own two feet. He, he always would tell me that, hey, if you decide you have a family, that family is going to depend on you. You're gonna be the leader of that family. He taught me the three pillars of a leader, right. which is um, protect, right. Right? provide, That's and right. guide. Right. So those are the three characteristics of a leader. You protect your family, you provide for your family, you guide the family so you mm -hmm. make sure they're successful, then you lead them in the right direction, right? So he made sure he instilled that into me in an early age and I instilled it in him. Those three, those three is also a good man. Because when I look it up, Stuff about good men, those three was the ones I read. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so even I know you mentioned earlier, um, Dante, when, when Keon became a teenager, he stopped feeling himself, he wanted to date, he wanted to do this. He became, he was starting to figure out who he was. Right. Like most of us when we mm -hmm. um, become a teenager. So did you start having like serious trouble out of him then? Anything that you had to do as far as discipline? Like, how did the discipline work as far as? You know, I know you guys built this bond. You had it since he was two, basically. Right, right. So he's pretty much your son because, you know, at the age of two, you starting to mm -hmm. learn, you start to figure out things, you start to come into who you want to be as a kid. Right. Then teenage years, you start figuring out who you want to be as a young adult. Right. So how did that go as far as discipline from toddler to a child to a preteen to a teen, right. and now he's going up? Howard. Okay, that's right. So believe it or not, the discipline with Keon was pretty, it was pretty simple. I, I never had Same to, yeah, I never <laughs> had to raise my hand to Keon. My punishment came more in, uh, just to give you a story, you probably don't want me to tell you this, but it came more in like exercise. If you do something wrong, I'm going to do some push-ups. Again, I did six years. Some push-ups. Push right. <laughs> <laughs> to him, like 
corporate punishment with my, you know, me having physical contact with him, mm -hmm. it could take him into another mental space oh, that he yeah. don't feel comfortable being around, right. Right? right? And so now he will be in a situation where, where do I go? Can, can I go to my biological father who I may not have that relationship involved with? Mm -hmm. And then the guy that I'm actually living with 24 7, right. you know, I'll have that bond either. So I have to be very careful on how oh, I did yeah. certain things with Keon. And again, he wasn't that bad of a child that I had to do certain things. It was more talking with Keon. We had a lot of talks. Oh, and then that, that's good that you said that. So you was actually thinking about the things to make him a better person and to also build your relationship right. without him even realizing that you was building him a tool of, yep. a, a, a man and you was, you know, building that bond between you guys. Mm -hmm. So when he's down there crying and fussing about this push-up, wow. his act <laughs> so, I mean, so you really was just building him and making him stronger on like um pretty much like okay you can't do this but instead of me hitting you mm -hmm. I'm gonna make you work out and although he was working out it was still good for him too. Mm -hmm. So so that that's real oh that's awesome. That that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Kia, how do you feel about the choice that you think your mom made a good choice for you? I was just about to, I mean, I was, you know, like, for real, like, when, when it was my turn, I was about to be like, I just want to take the time to thank my mom. That's right. Because everybody keep asking about me and my dad, but the whole time, my mom was the one who brought yeah. me into the world. So it's That's like, right. mom, I love you. That's right. I know right. watching. I love but, you. Yeah. That's right. I mean, my mom, this man would never been in my life. She knew who to choose and who to keep things going with because, yeah. like, that's, that's all I have to say. Yeah. My mom made the decision and she made the right decision. And yes, to answer your question, yes, I believe that it was all of it. Yes, all, all, all together. Yeah. Every choice. Yeah, I'll because say. the choice that she made. But she said something that I that's right. <laughs> because that was an awesome choice because the choice that she made to choose him, it was a benefit to you. Right. Right. Keon. So, yeah. Oh, good job, mom. So, Keon, what about your biological father? Uh, without getting too deep into your business, yeah, yeah. Um, what's your relationship? See, did you even think how he might feel when you wrote the letter or did it matter? Or? Yeah, I thought about it. And I'll be honest with you, my, growing up, my relationship with my biological father wasn't bad. Because yeah. he was doing, I don't know if y'all know him or anything like that, but during that time he was doing his music thing and I was really looking up to him as like a role model what he was doing in the community and stuff like that. And that's kind of still a part of me. That, that's still embedded in me. Okay. But it got to a certain point where, you know, life hits hard. So, you know what I'm saying? He started to focus more on his life rather than, you know what I'm saying? The relationship, the relationship right. with okay. his kids and everything. And I understand that. But at the same time, I had somebody in my life who was applying the effort. So mm -hmm. that's why I had to give all the gratitude to at the end of the day, not to bash my biological father or anything like that because I would never do that. Right. But that's why I had to give my gratitude right. to at the end of the day. All right. Oh, okay. So, Dante, so how do you feel about Keon? How do I feel about Keon? Yeah. So, uh, if you've seen the video, mm -hmm. I think the video is fresh how I feel about exactly. Keon. Exactly. So, tell us about the video since you mentioned the video. You tell us your thoughts you and everything about the video. <laughs> that you, know, about. you know, how you going feel about that? that? That definitely, for, I think, for everyone in the household got surprised. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the fact that he asked me to adopt him, I believe was the best Father's Day gift mm -hmm. I could ever receive. But I don't think it's just gonna be a typical Father's Day. I sit down, mm -hmm. I get my little gifts, you know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, I like it. And then we, we, we go on with the festivities mm -hmm. and, and, you know, cook out and eat. Mm -hmm. But when my wife popped the phone out and we saying everybody get quiet and we started to speak, you know, as a parent, you make sacrifices. That's um, you, you, you do things that you need to do to make sure that you give your child the best opportunity to be successful and have an opportunity in his life, right? Mm -hmm. To have a moment where your child show you that all the sacrifices that you have made in your life and all the things that you have done to ensure this security or this opportunity, to have the opportunity for them to say, hey, I, I realize what you did, I appreciate what you did, mm -hmm. and, and go full circle and show you why you still That's standing here on mm -hmm. earth. Mm -hmm. You know, most of the time those things come out, unfortunately, at the time of you going right. to your maker. Right. But for him to give me my roses yeah. that's while right. I'm still living. That's, yeah. right. that's right. 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 And just to let y'all know, baby, I'm crying. Yeah. Oh, I think it's such a good I mean, I watched it over and I said, oh, and it's something about when a man cried. Yeah. You know, it touched me. Like, I was like, oh, 
my God, I ain't never talking about it. And I don't care who I said it's going to to it about they knew about it. Mm-hmm. It went it just went like a wildfire. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. It just went. But when I tell you act right, I felt so they weren't even written to me. And I felt like, <laughs> like you know, like you said, give me my flowers while I'm here. Right. And you know, like you said, we sacrifice a lot. We work long hours, we tag, we work, we we'll feel like it, and we be like, look, I don't just did this. You know, you feel like, do they notice? And for him to write that letter the way he did, yeah. baby Keon, yeah. you touched a lot of yeah, people. A lot of people. Okay, we actually have a question. And it reads, um, basically it says, when you wrote the letter, how did your biological father feel about it? Did like the newfound attention, like, did he feel so? Did he address you about it? Did he say anything to you about it, or did he express anything? No, he did. Like he texted me, and it was basically like a generic statement of just keep God first and everything like that. Mm-hmm. But he, it really wasn't any type of talk about what the um, what what had actually happened. Oh, okay. And I also want to say happy anniversary to my parents' day anniversary. Oh, that's right. Fifteen years, fifteen years. <laughs> 15 years. And also, Keon's yeah. mother um, stated that your biological father actually thanked Donzel and her for the job that they have done with you. So that's actually a plus. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Talk about respect. That's yeah. awesome. So, Keon, do you think that um, um, who
they come with a package. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that that's real. That's that's, that's being real, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, if you want to be, if you truly love that woman or you truly love that young man, then you you show that by showing how much you care about their child, mm -hmm. right? At the end of the day, and so I, I couldn't come into the relationship and want to be with my man and wife and not show love to uh, her son, right? Then how much I'm really caring about her. Because now I'm gonna put her in a situation where she's torn between the man she loves right. and the child she loves, right. right? And so that's not fair to her, nor is it fair to the child. Mm -hmm. And I'm not being the man that I need to be because I know that I wanna have a child when I got into a relationship with her. Mm -hmm. So I should be already be ready to stand on my own two feet and be a man and take care of that child, which I did. And so how would you tell another man entering? How would you tell them to go about building this or what should they do? Like say if you or one of your friends come up and they say, hey, I just met this young lady. I really like this young lady. Mm -hmm. But she has a kid or maybe two. And the kid is young or even if the kid isn't really young. Mm -hmm. But they're not sure about it. You know, entering this um, relationship. Because like you said, when you enter in a relationship with the young lady who already has quote unquote this package, you are entering a relationship with that package. Right. So that means you're not just entering a relationship with her, you're entering a relationship with her son, her daughter. I think they come with who the person yes. is. Yes, and I, I think because that has something to do with it too. Everybody, you know, they can say everybody is not a good man like right. Rosé. You got right. some men that's looking for help. Right. Um or, or some men that really don't want to put the right. time in because their mindset is on something else. But they, they want might be the one that girl had a big butt and might just want to keep in it. For the friend, I'm going to say, why got a new get the cow? He right. might not really want to girl. Right. But let's say that they do want to get into the relationship, they think about marrying this um, young lady. It's so got to be the same What advice would you give them? I would say the three things that you have to go back, right? You got to be patient, mm -hmm. you got to be open, mm -hmm. and you have to listen. Okay. Right? You got to be patient because that, that child may not take to you instantly. Right? It may right. take a Y'all have to get to know each other. You don't have that genetic connection that already bring you together. So everything that happens is going to be through nature. I mean, nurture, not nature. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm right. saying? And so you got to be patient and you got to be open. You got to understand that child and hear that child and, and hear their feelings and let them tell you what they need from you. Right? right? And you got to listen because you, in order for you to get to hear it, right? So right. they're telling you what they need from you and how they need to go about developing this relationship. You got to listen and hear that in order for you to. Their so. Right, and, and you're right about that because you have some fathers and some mothers, let's, let's not forget them, you do have some that they're biologically attached to that child and they still don't care, you know, mm -hmm. as much either as like you're caring about Keon. So I think it has something to do with that person and mm -hmm. the love that that person has in their heart. Right. And, you know, and I think it might have something to do with just that person because even you can have somebody who might not have grew up with their father or whatever, but if they still have that love in their heart, they still will accept that kid as their own as well, even though they didn't experience that. I, I think it has something to do with the person a lot, because mm -hmm. you have some that still don't need you for their own. That right. Okay, well, we have a question for Donzel. Um, and she wanted to know, how would you tell them to handle kids that are acting out due to a step-parent being there? You gotta evaluate the situation. Mm -hmm. You know, why is that child acting out? Do they feel like they're being intentionally deprived? Because sometimes it depends on how old that child is and how long they've been in, in a household with that mother. And in my instance, the man comes along, right? So now that the mother is sharing attention with the, her significant other, right. the child may feel left out. Mm -hmm. you know, with that. So again, it goes back to what I was saying. You have to, you have to be patient, you mm -hmm. have to listen, mm -hmm. and you gotta be open. Right, so right. you gotta be open to seeing exactly what this child, why this behavior is happening, and get to the root that's causing the behavior, mm -hmm. and then solve it at that point. I can't really tell you exactly how to go about it because you're gonna have different situations for every um, circumstance. But again, I would just say be patient, uh, be open, and listen to the child, pay attention to the child, and see what's causing that child to act out, and then attack it at the root. Okay, mm -hmm. good. So, Keon, let me ask you this. I have a question for Donnie, but I'm gonna ask you first. Do you think Donzel is a good role model for other kids out here? Yes. And other kids, <laughs> <laughs> other kids will tell you that too, especially because he's been a part of multiple programs and everything like that. Okay. Talking to the youth and youth are just coming.
come and listen to them just because they see how I'm, how I was raised and how I act. And they like, man, where he get it from? So they right. come, they be like, well, how your dad raised you and everything like that. And they really look up to him as well, just through me in a sense. So really? of course I feel like my dad is a good role model to everybody, not just kids. He, he's a good role model to people older than him. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to tell you something my mother used to tell me a long time ago. My mother used to say, if other people speak of you, mm-hmm. then it's good, then it's true. So mm-hmm. you never speak of yourself. That's boasting. That's true. That's being arrogant. Right. So do okay. I think I'm a role model? I'm not sure. If y'all say I'm a good role model, then I'm a good role model. I he's okay. a good role model. Right. 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 I say he's a good role model. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you feel about how how he speaks of you? Like, how, how, do you, how does that make you feel? That makes me feel good. Right, because when you show up at you know, you show up at a job site and you do a job mm-hmm. and that job turns out to be great mm-hmm. and wonderfully done, mm-hmm. then you feel a sense of pride and accomplishment. Okay. Well, I'm not saying Keon was a job, but doing the things that I did to to see it now come to fruition that it's blossomed into something as beautiful as he is, mm-hmm. then I feel proud because I feel like a job well done. Like yeah. I did exactly what God put me in his life to do. Oh, that's awesome. So that's I got a question. So Keon, you know, you wrote the letter from your heart, and I can tell it was from your heart, because it won't know it was uncut, it was raw, mm-hmm. and I can tell you meant every word, because everybody's emotions was there. Mm-hmm. And I know you do it for the attention, but how do you feel everybody knows? Is it getting on your nerves? Are you tired of feeding yourself? Or did you know, like, how do you feel about like, that's Keon, that's the one that wrote the letter. How do you feel about that? I don't feel any type of way about it, honestly, because when you're a genuine person and when stuff legit is just coming from you, and like you said, it's raw and uncut, mm-hmm. I don't have to fake it for anybody. Right. It's legit. Anybody asks for it, I'm putting in a situation where I have to talk about it. It's all natural. It just flows out. Stuff like this just flows out. And then the love that I put behind it, That's right. it all comes out naturally. And the process mm-hmm. of me writing the letter, that was like, it took me a couple of days to write. That is smart. Yes. Oh, I cannot okay. think of like right three or four, oh, okay. three or four days, just going to the computer, trying to type things up, backspace. I'm like, nah, that's not crazy. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, so I'm like, I'm looking at it, I'm like, I'm calling my mom, I'm like, mom, you know what to say? Like, I don't know how to put it in the words. And I was like, some of this stuff I just can't type up. And that's what I told my dad. I was like, a lot of that stuff I just can't put in the words. Right. So the generic, what I had to tell him, what, who he was to me, who I felt like he was to me, my OG, my everything, and everything like that. Mm-hmm. That all flowed into it. And I, when I got when it got to the point where I just couldn't say anymore, that's right. when I that's when I broke down. Right. And um, it was like, so have you been out your way like, that's him. Have you been doing it today? Oh yeah, today. I went to, <laughs> <laughs> I, I went to the I went to the mall, my friend, went to the food court, okay. got something to eat. I walk out the door, I opened the door for these ladies, they was like, Oh snap, you the boy from the um, from the shade room, you went viral there. Oh, wow. I, like, I was like, yeah, they was like, Yeah, you touching a lot of people yeah. out here and everything like that. Keep doing what you're doing, you're a good role model. All the youth is gonna listen to you, so keep oh, being a good, good person and everything like that. So yeah, it, it's touching. So just to know that I'm touching other people. Exactly. Yeah, so so you go to Howard and be like, they don't care. <laughs> right. I think you know what the point all the way around, we would be in the Howard like, that's the young man, that's the guy. Right. So tell me listen, don't be trying to talk to me, I got a car, all that. Don't be trying all that. <laughs> don't be trying to have So Keon, for those who don't know Dante, tell us. Who is Dante? Oh, snap. Hey. <laughs> All right, so what can I say? I'm a spit, I, I kind of feel like I'm a spit image of my dad in, in, in a sense. Like when you see me, you see how I act, and you see how that verse and I can fit in anywhere. And, I, and that's, that I got that from him. Mm-hmm. My dad, he, he's good. He's good in the streets. He's good in the courthouse. He's good in church. He's good that's here, he's good there. It's like, and he's touching everybody everywhere he goes because when he opens up his mouth, when he does talk, because he doesn't feel like he has to speak every time somebody, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, every time he comes in contact right. with somebody, but when he speaks, mm-hmm. it's words like gold. It shows, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's why I get it from too. So anytime I open my mouth, I want to make sure I'm pouring into something mm-hmm. or I'm speaking some type of value into the air, into the universe and everything like that. Okay. So my dad, he's, he's cool. It's not like people see him and see the suit and everything like that, man. He got to put on. He got, That's to, he got to put a certain image out there. But if it was up to him, he'd be rocking clothes just like this. See, I don't got to wear that suit till I get to college. That's <laughs> right. But until then, I'm rocking stuff just like this. But yeah, my dad's cool. He's cool. Right. 
we still, man, man we cool. That's, cool. Right. That's all I got to say. And we still know how to get things done at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. We handle business, we cool, we laid back, and we can have fun too. It's, it's all, it's all what's what. Oh, so you have any advice for the man with step parents and what has done there earlier? What kind of advice can you give um, the youth to have step parents? Yeah, open up. Don't don't keep all that stuff inside of you, man. Because nine times out of ten, like I said earlier, they there for you. Right. And if you open up and you get shut out, then that's just that just means that it's time for you to find another role model in a sense. You don't have to. It's not you just because they're there and they quote unquote. Because a lot of them. Not, I want to say a lot of them. Some of them don't want to be in the child's life. They just want to be around for mm -hmm. the significant other. Right. So find another role model and everything like that. Find somebody that you can cling on to and learn from, and that's who you can give your credit to. But when it comes to the step parent that wants to be in your life, you have to open up to them. It's not a one-way street where they got to keep pouring into you, and they got to keep trying at you and everything like right. that until you open up. Now, you got to open up, too, at least a little bit right. so you can see, so y'all can, you know what I'm saying, it's a back and forth thing. It's, it's yeah. day in, yeah, mm -hmm. connection, and it's day in, day out work. It's not just you try it here and then you let it ride and then all that. No, nah, you got to keep applying pressure to that child. You got to keep opening up to that parent at the same time. I will say something, though. You know, I hit something in this talking that it's an ongoing building process. Mm -hmm. It's not going to end, right? As long as I'm still here on this earth, as long as he's still here on this earth, even with him going off to college, we just going into a different chapter. But I'm still going to be in his life. We're still building upon that relationship because it went from him being a baby to a toddler yeah. to a, a, a teenager a to a graduate mm -hmm. and then to a college, to a college grad, and then an adult. That's so right. they just continue to keep building and building. And building. Then he may have a family. And, and so it's going to continue. So that relationship, that connection that you have, it's a continuous relationship that has to be built upon right. continuously, which requires work. It never stops. And I'll share something with the youth. I don't think it's a bad thing to have a step parent. So don't think of it as a bad thing. Right. Um, think of it as a plus. You can be a plus to your step parent as long as well as them being a plus to you. It's a bonus. It's you a bonus. You don't have to be bad. Have to base it to one, one mom. One day you might have two moms, or you might have two dads. That's true. So that, that's a plus. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a plus. That's so we can, yeah. So Dante, do you think, um, do you think Keon? It's like this one. I have like five different questions laid on as you're coming up. So do you think Keon model for y'all younger kids? Is a model for y'all younger kids? A good role model. Yeah. yeah definitely. Um, I mean, why would he not? He would not be, right? You think about it. He graduated, again, I go back to it. He graduated in high school with a college degree. That alone oh, yeah. set a standard yeah. from an educational level, which I preach a lot in my household. And mm -hmm. the reason why he's here to, to say that he has accomplished that is because that's the standard which his mother and I have set. Education in our household is the number one most important thing that you have to do. Right? Because without right. education, knowledge of the world, and knowledge of yourself, and knowledge of different subject matters, how can you be successful in this world, right? right. And I'm not saying him going off to college is going to make him successful. It will give him the best opportunity to be successful, right? right. Mm -hmm. You can be successful without going to college and, and, and doing many things, but within my household, education is important. So mm -hmm. I definitely say he's been a great role model. He hasn't been in trouble, he don't have a record, he hasn't been, you know, in contact with the law, he hasn't mm -hmm. been, you know, in contact with, you know, different things that could damage his relationship or his future, mm -hmm. right? And so he's setting off the standards that I would want as the leader in the siblings to do. So how old are your siblings? Man, man people always, <laughs> no, this is gonna be hard. I'm gonna right. just, oh, just say, I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna just say that, okay. I, I do have two other siblings from my biological father that I, knew, I don't wanna leave them out or anything like okay. that. Okay. So I got my baby sister, Kasaya. I believe she's 13, maybe going on. I think she's 13, mm -hmm. probably 14. Then my little brother, Nehemiah, I believe he's eight. Okay. And I have my brother, Kmart. He's five years under me, so he's probably came out 12. 12. Mm -hmm. 12. And you got Cameron, she a year younger than Kmart. She's 11. Okay. And you got Kaden, he's 10 years younger than me, so he's eight. And then you got the baby, he's three. That's what I was going <laughs> 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 Yeah, so. He doesn't even watch it. Oh, no, your relationship, Keon, with, <laughs> with your younger brothers and sisters. How's your relationship with your brothers and sisters? You have sisters on your dad? 
I got one sister and one brother. Okay. Okay, so how's your relationship with them? My relationship with them is more being that I'm not there as much as, and I didn't grow up in the household mm -hmm. with them and everything like that. My relationship with them is strictly based off of the love that we have for each other rather than the connection that we have. So right. it's no love lost at all between them. Every time I see them, it's all love and everything like right. that. It would just be up to me to be more in their life, just like my dad took the effort to be in my life and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So that's how my relationship settles with them. You gave them a ride in your car yet? Like, no, I haven't. Don't let me eat no French fries, man. Don't let them eat no French fries. Don't let them eat no French fries. Don't let them eat no French Don't let them eat no French fries. Don't let them eat no French fries. Don't let them eat no French fries. So how do you finish it with, you know, with the ones you live with? I would say it's the same thing, like love, but the fact, the, the fact that they see me every day mm -hmm. and they wake up to me every day, it's more of a... That's big, yeah, it's like more of a big bro doing his thing and mm -hmm. they see me and everything like that. But I don't feel as though neither set of my siblings really know what's going on in my life or anything like that. Because I'm not much of a bit talking every day mm -hmm. like that. But like I said before, the love, that connection that we, I feel like we all are going to be so close when we all like right. sprout up and get older and everything like that. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I'm big brother That's and big cousin and I'm the oldest mm -hmm. in So it's right. like everybody's going to have to come to me to understand how things are going to play right. out in their life or which mm -hmm. route they need to take. So at the end of the day, with time, I'm going to have the strongest relationship with each and every one of them. That's Everybody right. in the family is going to look up to me because I'm the one changing the narrative. That's right. Oh, okay. That's right. Okay. Kia, yeah, you're so smart. How did you make your mom know? Yeah. 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 You're so smart. You have like a talk. Oh, 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 so. Oh, no, yes. yes. And it, it, it's, it's good to have because with this all the stuff going on with the world, black, pop, black um, lives matter and all that stuff, you got to know how to talk. Like, and you yeah. talk so good. I was all over here. 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 How do you feel about Keon going off to school? Are you worried about, you know, with everything that's going on? Do it kind of worry you? Or are you excited? Are you like, yes, we about to get out of the house? Uh, like, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not. I'm not nervous because I know that. Conversations with Keon about the world and what's taking place right now, right. Um, and that he has to understand the environment in which he's going into. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't want to go into too much detail about that, but we have had those conversations. And again, I know y'all probably tired of me saying these threes, but we have another three. Right? Same. Same. <laughs> <laughs> now, also, we have you know a three that we preach all the time is God first, mm -hmm. family second. Me third, right? So we feel like we put God first, no matter what goes on in our life, He mm -hmm. will direct us in the path that we need to go safely, right? right. And then family second. So we all thinking about each other, taking care of each other, and you put yourself third, you never have to worry about yourself because it's another and family member to right. take care of you, right? And so right. That, that cuts out the selfishness in the family. Mm -hmm. And so again, I go back to the first one. I'm not nervous about Ken going off to school because mm -hmm. I'm putting God first. Okay. And so when he go off to school, I'm putting in God's hand because I can't reach him anymore. Okay. Right. And then you you basically summed it up. I already asked you, how do you feel about Black Lives Matter and having a black son? But basically, mm -hmm. you basically just kind of summed it up. Right. Again, you put it in God's hands, right? You know what's taking place in the world. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, we, we're going through that right now, yeah. right? But at the end of the day, all you can do is what? Faith, right? So what's faith? Right. Faith is, you know, what to have faith is to believe in the unseen. That's I don't right. know what's going to happen, but I have faith that at the end of the day, you will be okay. Okay, we actually have a question. Um, Donzel, they want to know as far as the step parent boundaries, as far as discipline and decisions and so forth, do you it are there should there be certain boundaries or and then as far as discipline also is it like certain you certain level you should stop at or you should just because we understand that he's your son. Right. So step is just out the question. Yeah. But for those who who are, do you feel though they need some type of boundaries? Yeah, I mean, it means boundaries, right? Speaking on my, on my half, right, I, I treat him like he was my biological child. So how I, would I discipline the other kids now is the same way I discipline him then and now, right? But I will say, at the end of the day, you do have to understand you are a step parent, right? And there is a biological parent in the household. So the boundaries should be set between you and your partner. Right. Okay. So that way you won't reach you will make sure that you won't overstep any boundary because y'all have came to that agreement mm -hmm. that 
you are able to do this, this, and this, but you can't do this because of your position. And they'll keep all the tension, they'll keep all the argument between you and your significant other who may feel like you don't pass the boundary, as well as the child. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kiana, do you want kids? If so, how many?
So you got yeah. t-shirts and stuff. T-shirts, hats. I need to get me a t-shirt. Oh, what what website TV. can they find this stuff on? Oh, what's the website? Yes, richkidnation.com. Just like that, richkidnation.com. You can place your order and everything like that. So that's, that's how we rock it. Keep exactly. everything online. Right. <laughs> so you said your dad kind of like gave you that idea or pushed you to do it. So when you gave him that idea, you gave him that idea to like come up with some type of business of his own. Okay. So the concept, the concept that I try to teach in my house, and every, everyone in my household would, in some form, own a business. Okay. Right? Okay. The concept that I push in my household is ownership. Mm -hmm. You know, the problem sometimes is that we don't look for the whole loaf of bread we go after crumbs, mm -hmm. right? I'm gonna take an athlete for an example. An athlete mm -hmm. can make millions of dollars and be rich, mm -hmm. right? But the owner of the team making billions. Right. Right. Okay. Right. So I'm teaching right. my kids to go for ownership. Only you have more control, you have more freedom, you have more uh, opportunity to speak against things that's wrong because you own it. You don't have to worry about being fired. You don't have to worry about being let go. Mm -hmm. If you own that company, you set the policy, you set the procedures. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the day, there's no one can tell you when to come in, when to get off, and when you can take your vacation. And you got scheduled around that person. You can mm -hmm. send your office to tell your assistant, hold my car. Right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, so you said everyone in your household, so that means you what, what is your business? Tell us about your, your business. So I have a real estate investing company, Depower Investment Group. You okay. go to Depower Investment Group.com. That's my website. So we, we purchase houses, mm -hmm. um, renovating. But my concept as I try to teach my son, everything we do is to speak positively into the world. Right. It's not all again, it's not about making money. We all have to make money to live. Right. But what impact positively are you having in your community? So mm -hmm. the, the, the vision behind my company is going to certain neighborhoods who are right now not where they need to be from an equity standpoint mm -hmm. and go into them homes, rebound them, renovate them, and bring up not only the equity within that home, but every surrounding home in that area. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So do you feel each parent should be on the same level? So for it, financial? Yes. No. No, see, that's the misconception yes. that you know, okay. in, in order, for, yeah, in order for you to be considered a man, you got to make more money. No, mm -hmm. it's a partnership. It's yes. a team, right? So yes. where I'm weak, my wife is strong. Where she's weak, I'm strong. And just how we do it. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay, so I have a business. Well, keep up the good job, Dr. Dale. I mean, it's awesome. It is awesome. And then for to have a young man to sit and just, just say so, so many good things about you, and it's coming from the heart, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's really awesome. Well, we have to get ready to wrap up, guys. <laughs> so we wrapping it up. Um, like, take this time to say thank you again for yes. coming. We enjoyed you all. Um, again, make sure oh, you all um, share, uh, subscribe, to follow. Yep. And don't forget to um, check out this 17 year old is going to have a check out his yeah, website. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he's 17 ladies. He's <laughs> so not he's 17 ladies. <laughs> check out his website. He's doing things. Check out Donzel's website. He's doing things. My mother is doing things. Yes. 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 Look at it. That's right. Give your mom a shout out. That's right. Give your mom a shout out. Right. 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 She brought this together. So give her a shout out. Thank you, mom. Yes. Um, Keon, thank you for allowing Dante to come up here to talk with yes. us. And Keon to come up here to talk with us. Don't forget to follow, share, like, and subscribe. Thank Wait you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute.